All right, what's going on, folks? What's going on? Glad everybody could make it. Glad I could make it. Glad we're all here together in this. <laughs> what's going on? What's happening? Finally made it. All right. Uh, okay, so trying something a bit, uh, I don't know, different today, maybe? Kind of different. Yeah, I'm hoping I can pull this off, this kind of moody landscape. Just give me a second here, folks, trying to get situated. Um, I got it. I finally picked up another monitor, so I got this double monitor set up and trying to mess with it and I think I got it good now. Got it where I want to. So, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. What's happening, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. We got a bunch of folks already. Got a bunch of folks already joined in. So check it out. We're doing a landscape today. Hey, how's it going? All right. So this is from Alaska. I've actually painted this uh, particular this particular place. Uh, Two other times, three times, I think I've painted this before on different occasions, at different times of the day, different color harmonies. Uh, this one, I've never painted, uh, so just so everybody is on the same page, this is a reference photo. So I've never painted this particular photograph. This one's very gray, very subdued, uh, kind of moody. So I thought it'd be a cool challenge. Thought it'd be a cool challenge today. So, uh, glad to hear that, Deborah. Cool, cool. Hopefully, I can. Hopefully, I can make a good one. I'll make this a good one for you. Um, okay. Getting a lot of emails from the for the critiques uh, on my next stream. So that's good. So I forgot to I forgot to mention that this past weekend and on the last past live stream I want to do critiques for live streams number seventy the next live stream. So if you have any art that you'd want critiqued, send it to info at schaeferfineart.com. You can if uh, if you need to you can just check out my website schaeferfineart.com and my email is on there. Um, so definitely check that out. You just hit the little button there that's the uh, envelope, the little envelope icon, and that'll that'll be my email. So you'll see that on my website, and that that's how you email me. And you can send me send me like one or two photos of your art. You know, I'll probably just pick one because it looks like there's gonna be a lot of people that I'm gonna have to get through. So I may just be doing like one per person, just keep it fair uh, and balanced. Um, unlike a particular news station with the same slogan, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to probably just do one, one each. And uh, what pencil am I using to sketch? So I'm using an HB pencil. Uh, it's just some random pencil I found. I'm not even sure where I got this thing. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just an HB pencil, like a number two type of pencil. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this because it's just a water. It's just a pencil sketch for the watercolor. Um, so I'm just taking my time here. I want to make sure I'm getting stuff placed where I want because these lines, you know, there's not much to this landscape. So a lot of these lines, these diagonals and stuff are pretty crucial for getting the right kind of flow that I want um, throughout this painting. So I gotta really make sure things are going in the right spot. And uh, you know this is this is the time where 
you want to take your time at this stage a little bit because once you start putting the paint down or something, you know, the same thing with the drawing. Once you start shading it and start adding all this detail, it's very difficult to move something, to change something. So you, I really, it's, it's, it's better to take my time now and not rush uh, if I can. You know, I want it to be, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, but I want to get what I want for the most part. That's what I'm looking to do. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, we will, let's see, modify this a bit. Yeah, these rocks and things on this mountain are definitely going to be challenging. All these little bits of rock, trying to get that to look realistic and not so flat. That's something I always struggle with, so it's some sort of challenge here today. I'm no stranger to challenges, as most of you probably know. If you saw my, my recent plain air adventure I put out last night, uh, I went out and did a painting last night at 9 p.m. in the dark which was pretty creepy. And uh, I used some LED lights that I just bought, clipped onto my sketchbook. And I tried to paint this movie theater with this cool lighting effect. And uh, it was pretty challenging. I don't think it, it wasn't as successful as I had hoped, but uh, you know, that's what happens when you're trying something for the first time. All right, so there's something a little weird here. There's something a little weird. But I'm not mad at it, I'm not mad at it, it looks okay. It definitely looks all right, I think. You know, we got some nice little overlapping lines, pretty good movement to this center point. Um, you know, I might bump this up a little bit, just to give, let me see, does that really do anything? Yeah, that's pretty good. Give a little more dramatic effect, and I can bump this up a bit, because that's, this is a crucial point right here. This, this diagonal coming down with these rocks, I mean, this is a crucial, it's kind of almost the focal point of this painting. There's all these, these lines of, of tension going this way against this line. That's really the focal point. Um, you know, these, these lines of tension here going against this diagonal. Because this diagonal is, has a lot of dark contrast. And this is very light, and all these lines are kind of perpendicular to this diagonal. So it creates a lot of tension here, a lot of movement. Diagonals give a scene movement. You know, if you want to create something that's that's very peaceful, a scene that's very like peaceful and calming, you know, you can do a lot of horizontals. Um, you know, if you think of like a lake scene a lake with trees and stuff, everything's horizontal, very calm. But if you want your eye to move around, you know, diagonals create, you know, if you have a lot of diagonals, that creates some movement. Yeah, the, the emails aren't uh, the emails aren't overwhelming yet. Um, I haven't gotten too many. You know, I've gotten probably like seven, like eight or ten of them so far. So not too bad. But you know, when I got to critique uh, that many, you know, it's getting to a high number. But it should be fine. I was thinking of postponing it until Wednesday instead of tomorrow, but I think I might just go ahead with it tomorrow. If people miss the date, you know, they can go on live stream 80. We'll do another critique on live stream 80. So, and there's a dark line down here. That's, so I'm getting more horizontal as it's getting closer to me. So the further away it gets, it lo looks like, you know, really steep angles and then closer it gets to me, we're getting, uh, 
flatter and flatter. So that's how I'm kind of uh, thinking about this one. Hello, Sarah. How's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining everybody. A hey, Yami, what's happening? Cubs Win asks, have you heard of using cruciform? Uh, what is what is that? What is cruciform? It sounds familiar. Maybe I'm thinking of cuneiform, <laughs> which is like an ancient type of writing. What's cru cruciform? Never heard of that, I don't think. Matthias, uh, I was talking about I was talking about critiques. So the next live stream, I'm doing a critique. Doing critiques. So if you have any artwork to send to me, send it. Uh, check out my website. The links in the uh, chat right there right now, and uh, send me an email, info at shaferfineart.com. Just attach like one or two photos. I'll probably only use one, because there's so many people requesting a critique. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is cool. The only challenge is going to be getting capturing the mood. And that's why I named this one, you know, like painting a moody landscape because that's really the challenge I, I want to get. I want to I want to capture the mood of uh, this particular scene. So, you know, what does it mean to capture a mood? You know, that's the that's really the challenge. It's like it's not worrying about how realistic is it, it is compared to the photograph. It's like capturing the mood, you know, certain colors, certain softness of edges and stuff. Um, ah, Cubs Win says cross on paper, different angles and make focus of painting where the cross crosses. I've never really heard of that. Um, What's going on, Philip? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining. I just got the sketch done here. Yeah, it makes sense now. Cruciform, like crucifix, cruciform. I'm gonna have to. I'll have to look that up and check that out. I've never heard of that. It's very interesting. So this one, I definitely want to capture a lot of softness. Obviously, um, if you look at the reference photo, basically where the mountain meets the sky, the white of the mountain. You can't even. There's almost no difference. Um, it kind of just blends in. There's a softness. Oh, so that's something I want to try to capture. Try to have, just have that edge just disappear, you know, between here and here. Have this disappear and um, see if I can make this happen. It looks like there's a little bit of light coming through on the mountain, so that's pretty interesting. I don't know if maybe I should uh, use some wax resist just a little bit, just like just have a small area of white. Cutting across there, maybe. Not a whole lot. Don't want a lot. But, I don't know. Maybe that, just a little bit of interest there. Maybe we'll see how that ends up turning out. <laughs> but for the most part, this thing is overcast. So that's my, that's my main focus. So I'm going to start off by wetting the paper up here in the sky. And it looks like my brush is stained pink from ultramarine. Getting some pink color there. Uh, yeah, I think I might wet most of this whole thing, but... Um, because even the mountain is pretty gray. All right, let's start with that. Let's start with that top half. And so I'm just getting ivory black here. Try to show you guys. Just getting ivory black for gray and then maybe a little bit of ultramarine to cool it. So just like a cool gray mixture, nothing too crazy. And I'll probably vary that as uh, this thing progresses. You know, add a touch more blue here and there.
So this area is a bit lighter than everything else, so just trying to keep that a little bit, a little bit there. Go a little cooler now, maybe. Just get a little coolness towards the edge. Just continue downwards here. A little more ivory black, a little more blue, ultramarine blue. Very simple. making it darker as it goes down. This is kind of just the first wash I'm thinking and I might start mixing in like a little bit of purple, a little bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit of viridian. Yeah definitely some purple probably and viridian. That's, I think that's kind of the uh, harmony I'm going to go with purple and viridian for the foreground so I'll show you guys what I'm talking about so here we go, a little viridian it's pretty nice and then mix in a bit of purple in there as well Touch of viridian over here, down here. So keeping everything gray mostly um, to begin with. Yeah, that wax resist didn't really didn't really do much. There's a little bit of it there. Try to zoom in and show you guys. It's like small, small touches of it there. So it's pretty cool. I think uh, wax resist isn't much of a, isn't much of a match if you use a lot of water. Gotta have a lot of that stuff down. Otherwise the water just takes it out, takes it off. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with the sky. I think I'm happy with the value, hopefully. Um, I feel like I probably should have gone a little bit darker, at least in the sky, but we'll see. Um, I'm actually, I'm gonna try to go dark in the foreground right now. Let's just Let's try to bump this up right at the beginning because I know it's going to dry so much lighter. So let's see if I can just bump this. Some of this. Uh, some this to be darker. It's still wet, so if I can just add some pigment. Should be fine. So I'm just using some purple, some viridian, and a little touch of like alizarin crimson. Although I just dipped into alizarin and it just ruined everything. Too much alizarin crimson. It's basically magenta. Very strong magenta.
So I'm creating a little variety here of like, uh, you know, some snow patches and stuff. Uh, I don't really use any flats. I don't have any flats currently. Um, all I have are rounds. It's basically what I use all the time. Yeah, I just don't have. I don't have any flats. I thought about that today. Actually, I thought about like maybe I should have some flats too. But yeah, it is what it is. I'm so used to these rounds. I like being able to get like a sharp line very easily. You know, like a really thin line. And I kind of just adapt, I get used to them. And uh, it's just what I use now. It's what I've been using for a while. There we go, soften that line a bit, that's good. All right, I'm pretty happy with this first layer, I think. Um, as far as I can tell. Okay, let's uh, try to dry this quickly here. We got a little handy fan. It's pretty quiet too, so I can still talk to you guys. <clears throat> Don't worry, Emma, you're not too late. Um, this is just the first little, basically just started like 10 minutes ago or something, 15 minutes ago. Is the wax resist hard to remove? Uh, you don't remove the wax resist, you keep it on the paper. It's basically just like drawing a crayon with a crayon. You can't remove it. Um, it's not It's not meant to be removed. It just resists the water that's there. It just resists the water and the pigment so it leaves the white of the paper. Or if you use it on top of a dry wash, like I could use, if once this dries, I could use wax resist again. And then when I did a darker wash over it, it would preserve this color. So that's all it does, it just preserves the color that's there and it gives you a little bit of texture. Um, it's not meant to be removed. It's not like masking fluid where you actually remove it. So it's, it's something completely different. Yeah, the wax resist is basically just this. It's just a crayon. It's just a, it's a colorless crayon of wax. So, it's, it, you can't remove it. There's no way to remove it. Thanks, Deborah. I appreciate that for sharing the stream on Facebook. Greatly, greatly appreciated. It's really awesome. Hopefully, I can... Uh, hopefully, I can make some things... Make this a good painting. And nobody's going to watch the stream next time. <laughs> yeah. I definitely don't draw or paint or sketch every day, but I try to. I've been trying to do these live streams every day. This is my time of sketching and painting. Uh, Enrique asks, uh, about masking fluid, is it always necessary to remove? Yeah, I think so. Definitely. It's basically this, this, it's like a yellowy white, you know, thing on your paper. And you're going to want to, you're going to want to get rid of that. Um, normally masking fluid is used differently than wax resist. It's, you know, masking fluid is like, if you want to paint a figure prominently in your painting, but you have like a, you know, like a, a person on the beach or something, you can mask out the whole person and then just paint the background and then just paint, the, peel off the masking fluid once it dries. And then you have a white person, you can just paint all the detailed person in there. 
you know, that's kind of what it's used for. It's, you know, if you have something that's, that's like thin and, and light, very light and very thin that you need to preserve, like some kind of basket or something with these thin lines, you can use masking fluid for that. You know, that's, that's really what it's for. Um, but yeah, almost, I think it's, I can't think of an occasion where you would leave it on there. It's just a totally different look, totally different feel than the wax resist. Different, you know, uh, different application. <clears throat> Philip asks a uh, very interesting question. How have the live streams helped slash affected your business art practice? It's definitely improved it, you know, from what I, what I can see so far. I mean, it's definitely improved it. Um, you know, I was just looking at my business stuff the other day and so far this year, I mean, this is the most paintings I've ever sold in one year. Like this is, it's way, it's way more. Um, and I'm definitely making a little, little bit more money, you know, than I usually would, which is good, you know. Um, and I get to interact with the fans a bit more, so I definitely enjoy that, man. I definitely enjoy interacting with you guys because, like, you're the guys, you're the, the ones that are actually supporting my work. So it's good to actually, like, be able to talk to you, you know, if not face-to-face. I mean, I can't do it face-to-face, -face, so I, I can at least answer your questions you have, talk to you here. You know, it's just, it just makes more sense to, to do this more often. All right, this is almost dry, folks, pretty much dry. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with the sky and the mountain. That looks pretty good. I think once I add on the darks here and get darker in the foreground this is gonna look pretty this is gonna look pretty good hopefully i just i gotta be able to pull this off you know this is the challenge the challenge is all these little rock shapes that's the like so i'll show you guys a reference photo i mean that's the hardest thing it's getting those to look natural getting those to look to to make the mountain look like it has form that's the challenge um, you know, I could always go, no, I think the sky and the mountain is pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely helped my business. Thanks, Philip. I mean, you, you're the part of the, part of the help, man. You're the support in my work. Greatly appreciate it. So yeah, it's def definitely helped. It's definitely been helping, and hopefully it continues to help and uh, keep growing my growing my fan base here. People interested. I'm just trying to do my best, try to create the best work I can on these live streams. But uh, I always challenge myself and end up, you know, messing up something. Or but for the most part, you know, I'm, I do some pretty good work. I think. Um, Uh, Cub, Cubs win ask, we have more sketchers than painters on here? Yeah, probably, because my most popular videos, uh, unfortunately, for some reason, YouTube started promoting uh, years ago, these videos I made years ago about learn to draw. They're, they're my most popular videos. Like the, the, my most popular video has like 5 million or 6 million views or something, and it's that how to sketch, you know, learn to sketch, learn to draw video. And that's where the majority of people find me from um so that's why a lot of my painting videos and stuff like my plein air videos and the painting videos they don't give many views at all even though i have a ton of subscribers you know most people aren't interested in that they just wanted to learn to draw then i they subscribe and then you know they quit drawing and they never watch my videos so that's that's pretty much how it happens but um How to clean the edges, like how to have a clean pick. Uh, you tape it, you put some masking tape on the edges. All right, well, okay, uh, wh where do I begin here? What do I do, what do I do? I was thinking of just doing the rocks up here and just moving downward. Um, 
Maybe I should maybe I should save those smaller shapes for last and just focus on big values. I think that's maybe that's a smarter way to go about this. Um, so we'll work down here a bit. Um, this area is a little bit tricky because it's snow and rocks and trees and stuff. It's where all the trees starting to grow. So it's kind of a mixed, there's a mixture of things happening. So let's try to figure out how to, how to move forward here. <clears throat> So the color here, it's very gray, very gray. Let's, I'm gonna do like ultramarine blue, um, maybe a touch of purple and, and some ivory black to gray it off. Just keep it very gray back there, maybe a touch of viridian and stuff. Just a little mixture of everything, a little cool gray mixture. Ultramarine, viridian, ivory black, touch of purple just to slightly warm it up, but uh, yeah, let's see what this see what this does. Um, so we'll start with like a thin line here. Kind of keep it varied. As it goes down, keep it pretty natural looking. Turn down the contrast here for you guys. I think it's a little too light. There we go. Oh, too dark, too dark. Yeah, something about that is probably good. About there. So I, I do want to simplify this as well. So, you know, I'm not going to sit there and paint every single little rock and everything. You know, I'm going to simplify and uh, just kind of create some larger shapes, a little bit of smaller shapes here and there. But for the most part, we'll keep, keep it solid, solid bits of value and everything, soften some of this, try to keep it a little more soft where need be, and lighter. So the trick, the trick with these rocks on this mountain is to make them lighter than they actually look. If I made them super, super dark, uh, the way that they look in the photo, it's not going to look good. It's just not going to look good. And uh, the reason is that the reason for that is because they're a smaller dark surrounded by a lot of light. So they're not going to be as dark as something that's very big and dark. It's just not the case, just not how it's not how it works. And it's it's an interesting thing to learn and to figure that out when you're painting and stuff. Something it took, you know I learned it in theory and then when I tried to do it, you know, it's always I always ended up making it too dark. So that's something I'm definitely gonna be paying attention to as this progresses. That's why I kind of waited on those, on those rocks. I didn't want to do them first because I was unsure of how dark to go with them. So we'll just take our time here. So I'm going to continue some of this. Try to get a little more texture in here if I can.
Send you going downwards. Need more paint, of course. Come on. I'm getting my ahead of myself a little bit here. Need to do this little section first, but I just wanted to know where I was going with that. Do I ever use charcoal? Not really anymore. I, I did in the past, but I'm not a fan of it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Philip, that's interesting, right? The uh, how the live streams. Yeah, I mean, I live streamed in the past, but I ended up getting this camera that allowed me to uh, film like this, and it kind of happened a little. I got it, I think, a little bit before the whole pandemic thing, but then I just started doing these live streams every day. Uh, just trying to be productive and um, yeah man it's been it's been really cool it's been really good right, let's try to just definitely gonna have to go darker but for now for now I'm doing okay Okay, I'm liking what's going on here. I like, I like what's happening. So, <clears throat> just gonna continue. Let's go back here a bit. So this is the tricky part. I gotta really be, I gotta really pay attention here. So I might not talk as much. I just really have to focus. I'm gonna focus on how I want these to to look. Because once you put them down, you can't really. The only thing you can do is add more to them, and usually adding more doesn't help. Um, so I have to just be very careful with the shapes that I'm creating. Apologize for the silence, folks, but I hope you guys can understand.
So I'm going to try to blend this into the sky a little bit over here. Kind of give it a little bit of mood. Ah, didn't want to do that. I need a clean, need a clean brush. Oh no, that's not clean. Why is this not? None of my brushes are clean. There we go. Blend that out. No big deal. <clears throat> okay. I think I got through the bulk of it. I think I got through the problem there. Problem area. It's pretty uh pretty challenging. Darken this one a little bit cuz it's a bit it's a bit larger clump of <clears throat> rocks. So it's okay to and when the clumps get a little bit bigger, it's okay to darken them slightly. <clears throat> Sorry if I missed any questions, folks. Just please post it again if I miss it. Not trying to ignore you folks. Just doing some work here, that's so. all. Putting in the work. Turbocharged du Duck asks, why the heck does a 500k channel have 50 live stream viewers? I don't know, man. You tell me. You tell me. Where's everybody at? What's everybody doing? I don't know. I have no idea, dude. Even when I do the drawing stuff, I only got like 50 viewers. You would think I'd get way more drawing people. Did you sell the fox? Didn't see it on your website. No, I did not. Did not sell the fox. I haven't even, I haven't even put it up on my website yet. It's right here. Yeah, I've been slacking. I'm sorry, folks. I have to put some, add some more paintings to my website for sale. Um, by the way, 
You can check out my website, shaverfineart.com. Got some uh, gouache paintings on there, small gouache paintings, some watercolor paintings. Definitely check those out. If anyone's interested, um, I can add the drawings for sale back on there. But uh, right now, I don't have them on there currently, just for simplicity's sake. But uh, definitely check, out, check those out. And there's also ways to support me on my website. I, got, I make music. I have a Patreon you can check out. You can join on YouTube, become a member on YouTube. You can donate to me or check out the t-shirts and everything. It's all on my website, shaverfineart.com. Greatly appreciated. Okay, so this is definitely looking pretty moody, I think. I mean, I'm definitely getting the harmony, I feel. So... Um, Yeah, the fox is not on my website. Fox is not on my website yet. Um, I can put it up tonight, probably. Along with some other paintings that I need to put up. Yeah, I haven't added stuff on there in a while. So, like a you know, few week, week or two. Um, okay. This is still... Let me see. Do I need to add any more rocks, shapes, and stuff? I think I'm pretty good on the rock shapes. Maybe... A little touch of something over here. Not really a big deal compared to the rest of the painting. Just dripped there. Um, no, I don't think the time of day really even matters because you know I whether I do them in the morning or on the weekend or during the day. Like I've done them in the past all different times, and uh, I still have never gotten over like you know. 55 viewers or something crazy. You know, I think there's one time where I got a lot of people, but it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare, but you know, it, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not worried about giant numbers of people, you know? Um, it would be nice because like, hopefully I'd, I'd be able to get more support on here rather than like having, you know, 10 people carry all the weight of the support. I'd rather have like, you know, one or 2000 people be able to support and have it spread out a bit more and you know I think that's the ultimate goal but I don't need a ton of people you know I like it being pretty personable personal so that I know you guys I become familiar with you guys on here so but yeah no people you know numbers aren't everything you know all right I'm pretty happy with this actually I'm actually surprised. It, I, I thought I was going to go a bit darker up here, to be honest. But I'm actually, I actually like how light I went. I think I went a little too dark here, actually. But um, or maybe some of these are a bit too sharp. I might want to try softening some of these just slightly, just to show, just so they fit a little more into the mountain. You know, softness is, edges are crucial for uh, bringing your work to the next level, you know. If you want to create more realistic stuff, having your work be mostly soft edges, or at least soft to some degree, I mean, that's huge. It's huge. It's crucial. <clears throat> All right, so just softening some things there. Um, and what I mean by softening, I'm just adding a little bit of water, like damp, a damp brush, very small bit of water. Just kind of rubbing it a little bit so that the harsh line and maybe the darkness of it, the contrast, like goes down just a bit. So that's also a way to create soft edges as well, is by, you know, is changing the value, you know, making the value more equal rather than being contrasted. This might be a little too dark there. So, okay. Yeah, so see now I have more variety here. Some are a little bit darker, some are a little bit lighter. Yeah, it's it looks pretty uh pretty good. I just need a little more contrast in the foreground, but um 
let's just dry this up real quick before I jump into the next layer for sure. I like some of this purple showing through. That's pretty cool. So hopefully we can keep some of that maybe. I mean, I have to go a lot darker in the foreground. A little bit darker. I don't think I'm going to go as dark as the photo because I really like the mood of this. I think one more layer of like just some darkness just to give more depth to this area. I think we'll be doing pretty pretty well. Do you usually live stream at this time? Yes, I do. 5:10 Pacific Standard Time. That's when I usually live stream. Uh, I already know you hate acrylics, but what do you think about oil paint? I used to use I used oils for uh, from 2015 until last year, and I really love oils. Um, I think they're great. But for me personally now, it, they're just too much of a pain. Like I just don't have the time to deal with the cleanup and the, the chemicals and the, they're more expensive, you know, as far as materials and the, the materials that I want to use with them. It just, it's just more expensive. It's more of a pain and um, watercolors are just easier. And I, I, I really enjoy plain air painting. Like that's the thing that I really want to do in life is just travel and go different places and do just fill up sketchbooks and stuff and uh, document it, film it and make series of videos and stuff. And watercolor is way more adaptable for that. It's just so easy to, you know, I carry a small little bag and I can, it's, I have a whole plain air setup. I don't even need a tripod. I can stand anywhere and paint, I can stand anywhere. I can hold everything in one hand. I have the palette, uh, a palette, you know, a washcloth, my sketchbook, and then just paint in the other hand. And I can do every, just do everything standing up no matter where I'm at in the world. So. Have you completely quit oil painting? Why do you prefer watercolor? Oh, well, I just kind of answered that. The simplicity. Have you considered Twitch? Yes, I have. Um, I have considered that, and maybe I will do that in the future, like stream it both at the same time. I don't. I just. I don't know if my internet connection will allow me to do that. I might need a new laptop because my laptop is from like 2015, so I probably need to upgrade. It might give me more uh, Wi-Fi power, you know, just to. Might have a better connection and stuff. I have kind of quit. I have kind of quit oil painting. For now, and uh, I don't know. If maybe in the future I'll return to it years later or something. But for now, I'm done with it. I think um, I still have a ton of oil painting materials. I have a ton of paint, ton of canvases, panel canvases. My the whole back of my van is just full of materials, and I have no idea what to do with any of it. I have no idea. So if anybody's in the area that wants a bunch of oil painting stuff, please come get it. I'm happy to just give it to you, to just get it out of my place. You know, you can give me like 20 bucks and you can have the whole thing. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I literally have like hundreds of dollars worth of panels, paint, just all, all solvent, you know, like, but anyway. Uh... Yeah, you use a lot paint with a lot less paint with watercolor. Yeah, exactly. The paint goes a lot further. It's you know, it's just it's great to have this little thing. I can just hold this outside, hold the sketchbook right here, and just you know, just do a whole plain air painting anywhere in the world, standing up, you know, sidewalk, wherever. I can just stand and paint. I've done it plenty of times. I was in Paris. I stood on a third floor balcony, painted the street. You know, I've stood in a cemetery and a couple of cemeteries. Like I've just stood in just random places that like you wouldn't think you would be able to just set up and paint. You know, if you had a tripod and all this gear and all this stuff to worry about, you know, I can set up so quickly. I can set up in like two minutes and just paint, get a painting done in 20 minutes and pack up in two minutes and be out of there. You know, it's like, Yeah, very, very good point, Nathan. You definitely can't cheap out on watercolor paper. You got to get the good watercolor paper. Otherwise, 
you're going to struggle, man. I, I did in the beginning. I had some cheap pulp paper. And, uh, you know, I, I created some good paintings, but nothing like what I'm able to create now. Um, but, yeah. Okay, let's push this a bit. So I'm thinking this area a bit darker. I'm going to keep this the same, I think. And we'll push these other two planes of, of you know, maybe a little bit of dark in here just to show progression and then boom, dark here and then very dark in the foreground. So let's try to do this, folks. Let's try to bring a little bit of more contrast to this. Uh, somebody asks, I've heard something about art critique for subscribers. Will you do it again? Yes, I'm doing it either tomorrow or the next day, the next live stream, I'm going to be doing it. So send a photo to info at SchaeferFineArt.com. Just check on my website, check on my website, SchaeferFineArt.com and click the little envelope icon. That's my email. Click the little envelope icon. That's my email. It's info at SchaeferFineArt.com. Send me a photo. I'm going to be critiquing it either tomorrow or the next day. I already got enough sub submissions, so... That's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, let's let's get going here. I'm going to mix it up. Got to get a good amount of paint this time. A little less water. Want more of a milkier, thicker consistency. And um, I feel like I need just maybe. A, oh, I just ruined it. I thought I was, I wanted a bit warmer mixture and I added too much alizarin, crimson. Just wanted a touch of that in there and that just eats it up, man. So purple and viridian, I get this nice cool gray or cool greenish gray. So that's kind of what, that's kind of what I'm gonna go for here. Um, maybe a bit more purpley, more purple for this and the more green in the foreground. So we'll see uh, we'll see how this looks. So this is where this is, things are going to change right here. So I'll hit this again. I feel like I still need some thicker paint, but it's okay. I'm not going to get super dark on this painting, so uh, it kind of has an interesting mood. If you keep the value structure a certain way. You know, some people think you always have to, like, every time you paint, every painting needs to go, you got to have pure white in it and pure black in it. And it's just not the case. Like, you don't have to do that. Um, you know, if you want your painting to have a certain mood, you know, you limit, you can limit the values. And you don't have to go super dark all the time. You know, if you want a high, higher key painting, you know, you keep the values pretty light and you only have like, you know, limit the darks in it. So something, something to think about for your work moving forward. We'll have a little bit of this creeping in just to give just a slight transition there. To give it more, uh, a little more depth, you know, a little more variety. You know, there are some dark rocks and stuff over here, so. want to break up this sharp line a bit. Don't want it to be super, uh, you know, super sharp like that. Want a little more natural looking. Okay, looks pretty good, I think. Um, now I just want to get this darker plane down here and then maybe fade it up into that area. 
So I'm going to mix up another mixture. Is there a specific type of watercolor paper you'd recommend? I mean, I use I use Arches Cold Press, 140 pound. Um, if you want some really really good stuff, get the 300 pound. It's going to be a little more expensive. Um, I also use Arches uh, Cold Press uh, Rough Texture. I use that sometimes. You know, I, I have like a 10 pack of both or whatever, or like 10 pages or whatever. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, Arches is good. I tried Fabriano. I don't really like it personally. So, I mean, I would try, you know, a few different kinds that you can get. Depends on what, depends on what country you're in. If you're in America, you know, Arches is, is pretty easy to get. Uh, there's another kind. Saunders is a really good one that I tried. But, um, it's kind of expensive to get, I've found, uh, at least for me online yeah pretty much what nathan said in the chat there <laughs> he pretty much just exactly said uh, are you going to go for hard edges with this layer yeah a little bit a little bit um you know i, I don't really know what i'm doing to be honest if we're being completely honest i have no idea my paper this is arches 140 pound cold press and i just cut it smaller from a big sheet um, all right, so let's, let's get some nice shape in here. I want this to be a bit darker. I feel like I have too much water. But I am afraid of going a little too dark. All right, people sending in critiques right now. It's pretty good. Cool, cool. Good to know. Good to see that. So getting a bit more richer in color as it's coming towards me. You know, down here, a bit purple and stuff. Like I said, keeping those lines, you know, a little flatter as it's coming towards me. Um, I feel like I gotta stand up, folks. Just gotta be able to step back quickly and see uh, see what's happening here. Okay, so definitely definitely a bit too hard in some places. You know, soften it over here a bit, soften it back here, and I want to, like I said earlier, fade some of this. Just slightly into that hill behind it. Doesn't need to be sharp everywhere. Somebody says more green maybe. Actually, it's actually, there's a lot of green here. Uh, can't, it probably doesn't look like it on the camera, but um, it's a little more, you know, the whole tone is, it's pretty green, um, the whole thing. Just a little bit of purple down here. I know this area looks a little bit crazy because it's, it's wet and the camera's kind of picking it up as being wet, but uh, it's pretty green. Pretty darn green, I'm telling you. Gotta trust me on that one. 
Yeah, I really like this harmony, this like viridian, cool green, purple. It's pretty interesting. It's very different color palette. I really, really enjoy it. Do you watercolor on canvas? I have a friend who does beautiful paintings on canvas. No, I don't. I use Arches cold press, 140 pound paper. It's cheaper than canvas, probably. Yeah, it looks, it, honestly, it looks a little bit busy on the camera, but in person, it doesn't look as busy. Um, be honest. I'm not really sure why that is. It's just the magic of the camera. Yeah, very interesting uh, color harmony on this one. Not something I would really normally do because it's not exactly realistic. Um, it actually kind of is, to be honest. But uh, So if you guys want to see the very... I actually painted this scene a little different angle to it. Um, plain air, when I went to Alaska. Uh, it was one of my very first, very, very first plain air paintings. Uh, if you guys want to see that, it could be interesting to show uh, the harmony that was really there at the time. It was in the evening when I plain air painted it. But I uh, wasn't the best, wasn't the best, uh, wasn't my best plein air painting because, you know, I really overworked it and I was impatient waiting for it to dry. But uh, here it is. So you can see in real life, it actually was like these greens and purples and stuff. Um, yeah, this was, this was after the sun went down in Denali. This is right outside of N Denali National Park. And uh, the sun went down at about 11 p.m. So I, I went out there <laughs> like 11 p.m. and painted this while the sun had went behind the mountains. And uh, this is like all in shadow. But yeah, this is probably like my fifth plain air painting uh, in watercolor ever. But yeah, that's, that was kind of the, uh, you know, that's part of this mountain right here. You're just viewing it from a different angle when I was out there. But uh, yeah. Definitely made this one a bit cooler, which is cool. I mean, I like it. I really like it. It looks kind of looks like an old photograph or something. But yeah, there you go. There's some plain air, uh, plain air that I did. Yeah, this one's, it, it would be cool to like, uh, I thought I thought about doing this for a future live stream to do like uh, four small um, color studies of the same exact scene. So like take a scene like this and just try different color schemes. So like, and, and to be honest guys, this is a little bit more colorful than it looks on camera. On camera, it looks very gray, like it is gray, but it's it's you get more colors in, in in real life than through this uh this camera isn't like the greatest camera ever but it's still pretty cool but i thought about doing like some color studies of the same scene but using different color schemes so like this would be one of them then maybe the next one i use like more purples and magentas and like just see what kind of moods you can create like what kind of things you can do with different color schemes. I think that would be pretty cool to try out if you guys are interested in seeing that. Has the fan, fan got a name yet? I don't know, ask uh, Philip. He's been trying to come up with a, he's been trying to come up with a name for the fan. <laughs> Leonard, I think, is 
kind of what we've settled on. Uh, yeah, this watercolor sketchbook that I did, I'll show you guys some of the uh, Alaska ones. That's the pulp paper, so you can definitely see like how it just, it's totally different. Um, you know, totally different feel. But this was my very first one. It's the skyline of Anchorage with some mountains in the background. But yeah, just really challenging. But um, yeah, definitely I've come a long way, that's for sure. Definitely come a long way. You know, actually my favorite painting in here is the very last one. I started getting the hang of watercolor and then we had to leave, like the trip was over. This was the seventh painting that I did, plain air. And I got the colors really close to life, man. It was an incredible view. But you can just see how the the paint, this paper just doesn't absorb the paint as well. You get these really harsh lines. It's very hard to soften things. You get It's a totally different feel than this kind of paper where you get this, this different kind of quality. That just, it can't, it's hard to replicate on that other kind of paper. Because it's just not as absorbent. Yeah, I mean, this is very, this is a very cold, this is a very cold, moody painting that I did, very cold. It's a little bit cooler than the photo reference. You know, I decided to just push the coolness for some reason, I don't know why. Um, it's not something I normally do. Normally I'm, I'm, I lean towards warm colors. So it was kind of cool to experiment and just push the, uh, the coolness. Viridian is, is one of my favorite colors, so. I like, uh, I like that I was able to use that a lot and really push it. And a little bit of purple in here, dispersed throughout. It's pretty cool looking. I'm gonna take the tape off here in a minute. Um, you know, it does look, I'm not completely happy with it. You know, it's a little busy in the foreground and maybe over here. Uh, I might end up like just adding a little bit of water to just soften some things, you know, I don't know. But I'm very happy with this area. You know, that was, a part I was concerned about and it ended up coming out really well so yeah I think we're dry so let's do it let's take this tape off let's see what let's see what I'm working with so how long did it take me to do this painting guys let's see yeah an hour I've been streaming for an hour and 13 minutes so I did this painting in an hour so can't be too mad at that. Not bad for one hour of work, right? You know, the sketch probably took me 15 minutes or so. And then, you know, between all the drying times, I did this thing in about 45 minutes, painting time. So, yeah, there we go. Always looks so much better with the clean edges. Yeah, I like this one. This is way different than anything I've ever done. That just goes to show you that, you know, sometimes like painting the colors accurately, I mean, it's a good exercise. It's what I usually do a lot of the times is paint really accurate colors to what's really there. It doesn't capture the, the mood, the emotion like this. This is just a way different feeling. You get a certain feeling from looking at this. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'll try to show it to you. Let's see if my webcam looks any better. Um, so, there you go, guys. Final painting. So, yeah, I mean, if this was hanging on the wall, I mean, it looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty good. You know, I think I, I think I accomplished what I was trying to do, so. I was trying to capture the mood of, you know, a certain mood. Um, <laughs> Philip, those names are... <laughs> Breeze Larson or Gustin Timberlake. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Did you use lower quality paper on this one? No, I did not. I'm using Arches 140 pound cold press paper. So, um, did 
Did I miss uh, I miss any uh, questions here? I don't think I did. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's actually it doesn't it's not as blue really. It's mostly green, grayish green, maybe a little bit of blue, mostly blue up here. But purples and greens down here, cool, really cool green. Yeah, I, I really wish this camera was better at uh, capturing the color, but. I'll put this up on my website for sale later on with a lot of the other ones. So here, maybe maybe what we can do is, so I'll show you guys. So this is the painting from today, and then this is the fox painting. So this will, we'll see if this camera can just, you can see the differences in the colors and stuff going on. Um, but you can see how the camera just changes colors a little bit. You know, it kind of doesn't know, like, it starts turning more yellow or more orange or something. It starts bringing out a certain tone when you put certain colors in front of the camera. So that's the problem with cameras like this. It just, uh, you know, it shows different kinds of colors depending on what you put in front of it. So, yeah, these are, these are some that I'm going to be putting up later for sale. The ones that you're seeing now that I'm showing you guys. So, all these will be up for sale later on. Um, so check it out. You guys want to see this Alaska sketchbook really quick? There's only seven paintings that I did on that trip. This was my very first plain air watercolor trip. First time I ever did plain air watercolor. So I'll show you guys, I've, I've shown this in videos before, but I might as well show you guys right here now since it kind of relates to the painting I just did. So this is a cheaper kind of paper. Um, and you can just tell, I mean, you can just tell the way, just doesn't absorb the, you know, it's not, you can't, it's hard, it's really hard to get as subtle. Um, you know, and you can see the shapes that I tried painting with the mountains here. I mean, it's not bad. You know, I did get some different values and stuff, but uh, you know, it's a lot different than where I'm at today, you know, with something like this. I mean, I just, I've come a long way and I've gotten different materials. And also you gotta remember, I painted this from life outside. I mean, it was like 50 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I mean, it was super cold, um, you know, windy. This place was windy cold so I'm out in there painting in the cold I'm like shivering hands are numb you know I'm trying to get paint this thing as quickly as I can so definitely different circumstances as well when I do these paintings um, most of these were painted from the car though luckily this one I painted from the car just somewhere parked somewhere you know I tried I had to use some gouache because I didn't save the white of the paper so it didn't really you know not the best um, not the best but see, that's what I always struggle with is these these rock shapes. But I mean, you can tell what it is, it's just not the best painting. This is inside Denali National Park, about 15 miles in, as far as you could go, that they let you go at that time. And uh, the sun was going down, so it got some nice warms and cools here. But once again, trying to simplify these uh, rock shapes. But you can see I just struggled with like different layers of things and yeah, it was uh, the only thing that's really good is like maybe back here is pretty good, pretty solid, and the sky looks pretty decent, but yeah, pretty struggle. Um, and then this is the one I just painted, showed you guys. So this is like a different angle, you know, looking more from the south or something, and then this is the same place different time of day, different kind of different, uh, you know, weather patterns and stuff. This was like, there's no clouds. The sun had just gone down. So the sky was, uh, pretty warm and interesting. This was all cool, but you can see, I just overworked the, I, I couldn't wait for the, it to dry. And I kept trying to put more paint on it. kept lifting off the paint. So it was, it was a big problem, but I, I do love the color scheme that I was able to get here. 
This is one of my favorites for the simplicity and the color scheme. All right, a few more here, folks, a few more. Uh, this one was pretty cool. A bunch of trees and a forest and stuff, a lot of depth back here. I started trying to understand, like, how to simplify and, like, how to layer. I still overworked it too much, put in too small, too many small little shapes and everything. And then finally, by, like, the last two days of the trip or something, the very second to last day, I got a good painting. And uh, I was getting used to like figuring out this paper, how, how it felt and how the paints reacted. And then the trip was over. As soon as I kind of was getting used to it, had a good painting, you know, good value structure and everything. So yeah, this is my very first sketchbook using watercolors basically. Um, my first plain air sketchbook, you know, I did a few, I did like one or, you know, I did a few watercolors practicing before doing these plain airs on a trip, but this is really my first uh, plain air watercolor sketchbook. So there you go, folks. Sorry that the stream's freezing up. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I was having trouble with the internet last night. Comcast had an outage around here, so I don't know if it's like time of day or something happening. Um, hopefully it'll be all be smooth later on. You guys can either you know just scroll backwards or watch the uh watch the replay i guess i'm going to end it here folks uh, i've been on here long enough thank you guys for watching and um i don't know the twitch would make it better like I, I don't know that it's a youtube problem it's just an internet problem my internet sucks that's the problem i have comcast if i had a different internet provider it'd be better but um Uh, anyway, guys, um, yeah, it's not something I can solve. Like, I, you know, I didn't change anything with the internet. So whatever technology is doing, you know, I think I need a new laptop, to be honest. And um, saving up for that one day. Hopefully I can get a la new laptop. That might help the speeds a little bit. That's the only thing I can think of doing because I can't change my internet provider, unfortunately. And I'm right next to the Wi-Fi box. Like, I'm as close as I can be to it. You know, I could try plugging directly in next time. I might do that tomorrow and see if it's any better using Ethernet. But, um... Uh, anyway, guys, um, like I said, I'm doing critiques tomorrow. So definitely send, send any photos of art you want critiqued to my website, shaferfineart.com. Check out my email on there, info at shaferfineart.com. Send your artwork there for me to critique on the next live stream. You can also check out some paintings I have for sale on there and uh, ways to support me. Definitely check that out, I appreciate it. Anyway, folks, um, thank you guys for watching. Sorry about the problems at the end, but uh, Sorry about that. Hopefully it was a good experience most of the time. I'll see you on the next one. Uh, peace. Peace, folks. See you.